Hey everybody, Stephen O'Brien here and on behalf of BetBride I'm going to be bringing you our vlog piece, The Road to the Super Bowl. This week, the Divisional Playoffs. Right, first up we have the Falcons versus the Eagles. This is a really interesting matchup. The Falcons are the number one seed in the NFC, but they go into this game as the underdogs. That's only happened five times since the merger in the 70s. And why is that important? Well, when you go in as an underdog and you're a higher seed, it is a strange situation. And why are the Eagles the underdog in the first place? That's because they're missing Carson Wentz. He's the quarterback, the MVP candidate, who took them the whole way and ended up taking that leg injury. And now he's out. And we have a backup guy in called Nick Foles. But an important thing to note that the top seed or second seed has been the underdog five times since the merger. And they're four and one in those matchups, with the other game only being lost by about five points back in the 70s. So that's important here as well, that although you might think that they won't be able to put it up to the team, they are the number one seed for a reason. We have the seventh best offense going against the eighth best offense in this game, and the Eagles defense is actually fourth in the league, so they're pretty stout. We know what we're getting with the Falcons to a degree, but let's take a look at what we're going to see in the Eagles here. They've had a weak layoff. They have Nick Foles, a quarterback. Nick Foles has a passer rating um, of 103 in his last playoff game, albeit that was back in 2013. And throughout the regular season then, he's, we kind of see the drop off from Carson Wentz to a quarterback like Trevor Simeon. That's the kind of drop off that we're dealing with here. However, if we look at the Jags game that we saw in wildcard round last week, then we saw that Blake Bortles, even though as poor as he is, a stout defense can get you through. An important thing to note about the Falcons on the other side is, is that out of the last eight games, they've won seven. The only game that they actually lost was to the Minnesota Vikings, and that was a very low-scoring game. And the Minnesota Vikings are kind of tipped as the actual best team now in the NFC. They've got a good defense. They've got a great offense. And we're going to take a look at those a little bit later on that matchup. So what are we looking at here with the Eagles? So the Eagles have Jay Ajayi, who had 130 yards against Atlanta in the regular season. We have the Eagles wide receiver Aguilar is having a career year. Uh, Zach Ertz is the second best tight end in the NFL. And also, if you look at the Eagles defense getting after Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan has a completion percentage that goes from 71 to 51 when he's pressured and his passer rate or drop, rating drops from 100.1 to 72.7 when he's pressured as well. And we have some fantastic edge rushers and talent on the Eagles defense. So this game is really going to come down to you know, can the Eagles limit the likes of Julio Jones for, for the Falcons? Uh, can they get after Matt Ryan without, you know, busting the coverage in the secondary? And if they can do that, well, then they're just going to go on and win this game because defense wins championships. We saw that with the Jags last week, and we saw it when the Denver Broncos went to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago in spite of Peyton Manning. As great as he was back in his heyday, not so much now. So that's going to be an important factor in this. So look, you see the odds flashing on the screen now for Betbright. You know, the odds in this are quite low. The spread is tiny and they still tip the Falcons to win this. So remember what I said. Since the merger, the teams are 4-1 and one, who are the top seed and the underdog and the spread is quite low. It's up to you whether you want to bet it. A couple of us got pace in the wildcard round, but they seem like pretty good odds to me. Right, the next game is Titans at Patriots. The Titans have to go into New England and no one wants to do this. I'm not going to wax too lyrical about this game because I think we know what we're getting here. Now, famous last words. What this game is going to come down to is, is can Tom Brady, after a week off, and after all the turmoil that's happened in New England, which I'll go into in a second, can he stick it to the Titans? We have Rob Gronkowski has re just revolutionized the tight end position. He's the best in the game. Anytime he's healthy, he's the best in the game. Deion Lewis, the running back, is having a career year in New England. The, again, I said it last week, the one thing that the Titans have gone for them, well, two things really. Marcus Mariota, the quarterback, who has the best touchdown to interception ratio in the red zone since he joined the league. And then if you look at uh, Henry, the running back, just an absolutely dynamic running back. We've, they've done Marco Murray as well, but he's rumoured to be injured. He might not play, and if he does, he's not going to be at full capacity. The Titans' run defence is where they're going to sort of excel here. So can they nullify the run in Deion Lewis? And then they've got to contend with Tom Brady, who's able to read the defence. He's 40-plus now. You know, There's nothing that he hasn't seen. And then Rob Gronkowski, the, he's just uncoverable, really. But can they limit his damage? and he's prone to injury so hopefully no one wishes an injury on a player but if he it was to get injured in this game that would be considerable here so the titans also have a defense run by dick lebeau it's his 59th season in the league which is just insane the guy's 80 but tom brady is six and two against lebeau when he comes up against him now let's get to the controversy there's controversy swirling in new england between a power struggle between tom brady bill belichick the head coach and robert Kraft, the owner 
It was the selling of Jimmy Garoppolo to the 49ers. Apparently Tom Brady, according to an article on the ESPN, all of this stuff was alleged. They've all denied it. Wanted Jimmy Garoppolo traded. They traded Jimmy Garoppolo to the Niners. They traded Jacoby Brissett to the Colts, which left a 40-plus quarterback who, let's face it, if he gets one knock, he's of an older age now. Could that end his career? Who knows? So, you know, there's controversy there that Brady wanted him sold. Belichick didn't, and Robert Kraft ultimately sided with Tom Brady. There was rumors that Belichick would go to the Giants. And then there's all of the media swarm that's coming around that. However, I don't know if that'll impact this game. The Patriots have been there and done that. They've had to put up with Deflategate, Spygate, stuff going on about the tuck rule years ago with the Oakland Raiders and famous Packers. Uh, legend Charles Woodson who came to the Packers so look they've dealt with adversity before especially going into the Super Bowl Brady's had his suspension and they've dealt with it well they've had a massive comeback against the Falcons and he is the greatest of all time if you believe the literature and I take off my Aaron Rodgers hat and put on my Tom Brady one on the spread on this game is massive you'll see the odds on the screen with Bep right here so the real question is is that can the Titans cause just a crazy upset the Patriots defense is the key to that they're 29th in the league they're not good they weren't good at the start of the season people thought that Tom Brady went into decline because he couldn't sort of you know compensate for that the spread is large can they cover the spread against the Titans they had a similar spread against the Jets and they put 43 points on the Jets and I don't think the Jets surpassed even 10 I think it was 43-3 or 43-6 so that's an important thing to note in this that can they cover the spread they definitely can but will they it's the playoffs it's the divisional playoffs it's any given Sunday who knows next game we're going to look at is Jags the Steelers they've got to go in to face the Steelers after a week off and this team is dangerous so we all know what we were getting with the Jags we're getting Blake Bortles who's super inefficient I mean he was overthrowing everybody last week rumors is that America are going to send them to North Korea to overthrow Kim Jong-un and then we have the Steelers so we have Big Ben you know this guy has the Steelers in total have 36 playoff wins um, you know, but the, and he is the top 10 quarterback in pass yards all time. So we know where we're getting with this guy. He has Antonio Brown, who's uncoverable. He leads the NFL in reception, uh, receiving yards. He has 100 plus yards in four of his last five postseason games. So when it comes to the postseason, he really steps up to the plate. Also, we see rookie Juju uh, Smith. He has 917 yards and he leads the rookies in receptions. We have Le'Veon Bell, who's second uh, best running back in the NFL this season. So, I mean, the offensive weapons are there. So it's going to be a matter of a top offense coming up against a top defense. So, you know, the Jags, what are they going to give us? Can, can they limit the Patriots or can they limit the Steelers um, in offense? Maybe they can. Can they put up points of their own? It doesn't really seem likely where they might see points coming is, you know, Blake Bortles can be on. Let's face it, he's put up some super scores against teams. So, you know, they have Leonard Fournette, who's the best rookie in the league uh, at running back. He led all rookies with nine rush touchdowns. And the Jags, who are first in rushing because of him, are sixth on offense because of the points they put up. And they're actually the first best defense in DVOA. So that's important here as well. Uh, the spread on this one is, again, just over a touchdown or thereabouts. The actual uh, accurate odds as of now is up on the screen from Betbright. So the Steelers are favorites. Uh, they're rightly favorites. They have Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell to deal with. They have a pretty stout defense. Their defense uh, is after sacking the quarterbacks 56 times and they lead the NFL in sacks this year. So can they pressure Bortles? Can he be limited? Uh, he already is limited in his ability, especially in the postseason that we've seen. And can Big Ben do what Big Ben always does and get on that collision course for the Patriots in the AFC Championship Conference game? Um, yeah, let's wait and see. Okay, guys, lastly, we have an absolute clangor of a game. This is Saints at Vikings. The Saints are the team that nobody wants to face in the playoffs. And the Vikings kind of hold that moniker, but for good reason. You know, they're, they're the second best seed in the NFC. And that stadium was really difficult to go in and play in. The Vikings stadium is super loud. So it's very hard to hear any audibles, which Drew Brees, as experienced as he is, uh, would be doing. Now, we're talking about a Vikings team who's really super well-rounded. Um, but they've had a week off so sometimes that can impact the team they can sort of knock off the roll sometimes it's better if you go on kind of a bit of a run we've seen teams hit a hot streak so what are we talking about here Case Keenum is having a career year uh, running back Latavius Murray is the second best running back in the NFL uh, Thielen and Stefan Diggs have career highs this year uh, tight end Kyle Rudolph has the most receiving touchdowns in team history but they're coming up against Drew Brees who's the most accurate quarterback in NFL history He's got a running back duo in Kamara and Ingram who are the best running back tandem in the league. And Brees has 375 passing yards four times in the postseason. But he's coming up against a pretty stingy Vikings defense 
This is a fierce team, a team that famously smushed Aaron Rodgers into the ground and ended Green Bay's playoff hopes. So this is going to be another game of just, you know, can the Vikings put it all together? We saw the last couple of weeks in the regular season that they kind of had a brain fart moment where we saw Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen drop balls where, that they should have caught. And that was pretty uncharacteristic, even though Case Keenum has really stayed on point. And this is a guy who's a third-string quarterback, remember, after Teddy Bridgewater uh, went down and Sam Bradford, that massive trade that they made uh, last year for Sam Bradford, he's got injured. So this guy is, you know, a third-string quarterback and he's absolutely smashing it. So that's what this game is going to come down to. Add to the fact that the Vikings have the second-best defense. Now, first-best defense, if you just take the stats outright, but the second-best when you, it's called a DVOA, when you sort of adjust that for who they've played, sort of the second best defense in the league. Can they get after Drew Brees? Can they rattle them? Um, it's in their stadium, in the Vikings stadium. And look, if they do, the Vikings are on their way towards a Super Bowl in their home stadium, which would be the first time in NFL history that a team has ever done that. So, you know, and when you look at the Vikings uh, defense, for instance, where, where somewhere where Drew Brees would get you is kind of, you know, spraying that ball around to everybody. I believe his, you know, he had almost a perfect passer rating last week. He was spraying it to six, seven different uh, receiving targets. But the Vikings have the best third down uh, conversion rate, which getting after the quarterback since 1991. So they've been doing stuff that hasn't been done in decades. This is going to be a clanger of a game. The Vikings are favorites in this game. There's a very small spread, which is on the screen now from BetBright. So if you're going to put a bet on, you know, we're talking about maybe just over a field goal or you're talking maybe a touchdown and the difference between these two teams. And I wouldn't write off Drew Brees, who's absolutely clutch in the postseason. The Vikings, however, have been known to drop an egg. Will that happen this time? Look, I, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, the you know, Packer fan in me wants them to... Well, maybe that's unfair. That wants them to tank. But I don't think they will. They've been exciting to watch this season and they're deserved uh, winners of the NFC North. And to see them in the Super Bowl might not be a bad thing and to see them in the home stadium what an electric atmosphere right guys that wraps up the divisional playoff rounds it's going to be an exciting week last week was insane this week is going to be equally as insane i'll be analyzing the games reviewing the good the bad and the ugly and my good the bad the ugly piece that's going to be out on monday morning on the bet Bright blog and then i'll be with you again with another vlog to sort of preview what's going to be happening in the afc nfc championship games